Hello friends, this is another video in the series Tailwind CSS on Rails and today we are going to talk about uh, building buttons. So the other day I went to the Tailwind uh, UI uh, website to have a look at how Tailwind uh, itself builds different buttons and interestingly when I go to inspect a button all the CSS classes are masked so unless you pay you cannot uh, just view the classes but don't worry we are going to build the buttons on our own. So uh, if uh, you go to the Tailwind uh, talks on like reusing styles, uh, it suggests that uh, there are different ways for you to update all the classes uh, of like similar elements uh, at once in your app. And I really don't like this idea, especially with buttons. If you have uh, like a few different variations of buttons around your application and uh, you want to uh, update uh, all the button styles uh, at once, it might not work if you don't have the styles uh, like uh, in the right uh, order all around the app. So it would be a lot of copy paste and a lot of pain if you want to update the styling of your button. And why do this if you can abstract uh, a button into a CSS uh, uh, class or into a component? Uh, I think that Bootstrap has the really best API for uh, CSS abstraction of buttons. It has the variations like primary, secondary, and so on. So all these colors. It has uh, uh, outline buttons. It has different sizes. It has uh, disabled states, uh, and uh, you can uh, build buttons in the uh, in line or in blocks uh, or any way you like. Um, also, what about building the uh, button components? So here is an example of uh, a really well-built uh, uh, li library using view component, Polaris view component. And it has lots of uh, variations of uh, buttons here, buttons with icons, uh, big buttons, small buttons, disabled buttons, and so on. But if you have a look at the code itself, uh, here is the uh, .rb file for the button. Uh, there is so many different uh, variants that you can uh, pass in uh, there's uh, a real, real, real lot of code uh, that is being maintained uh, in the, the RB file and some code in the HTML file. And um, there are some class abstractions that are also kept here in the CSS uh, uh, file. And really, I discourage you. I really discourage you from building your own button component and uh, creating your own API for creating buttons where you can just go with the bootstrap uh, path abstract a few CSS classes and use them all around your app and that's how you will be able to have just one source of truth of how your buttons look in the .css file. So buttons is not something that uh, I would build a component uh, for. Just use link2 and button2 and uh, uh, use bootstrap-like uh, CSS abstractions. And going back to our application, here's the app that we have been building in this Tailwind CSS on Rails series, where we have uh, navbar, sidebar, different types of uh, layout, uh, we have uh, models, we have dropdowns, uh, and so on. And now we're going to build buttons. So to the begin, uh, to start, we're going to have uh, a home page, oh, button, uh, that is a link and a button. So uh, here uh, I have a link to root path and a button to go to root path. Path. Both of them produce uh, different uh, HTML. This is an A tag, and this is uh, the button is a form with uh, an actual submit button. So this is the submit button. But uh, Telvin CSS uh, strips all the default uh, classes by default, so at the moment they look uh, the same. And we are going to style this tool to look uh, like uh, buttons, more or less like bootstrap buttons. So let's try doing this. And to make uh, matters a bit harder, I'm going to do it uh, with having an image tag, uh, uh, with having an uh, icon next to the button. Because really often when you build uh, uh, buttons, you would want to have an uh, icon uh, next to it. I don't see any examples here, but you get it. So. Uh, Let's try building something. I will add some uh, default uh, background uh, to start, just to see the whole element that we are working on. So here's the background, and uh, this is the whole clickable area, but uh, it is not uh, all uh, in the background. So let's add uh, the flex class, and now it is in line, looks already better. Okay, <clears throat> let's add some space between the two elements, between the text and the... Uh, Icon, so let's say gap two, and just to ensure that the two elements are definitely on the same height, I will say items center. Okay, 
uh, this looks fine. Now let's add some uh, basic rounded uh, effect to the button. So I will just say uh, rounded. Okay. And let's add some uh, spacing on top and uh, on the X axis and on the Y axis. So I will say pattern X4, pattern Y2. So we have some space on the sides. Uh, okay. Now um, let's add some default font. Let's say font semi bold so that the button doesn't have the same font uh, weight as uh, just text in your application and looks okay. So here's a basic uh, button, but uh, it doesn't feel like a button unless uh, it has some effect when you hover on it. So let's add uh, some hover effect and we can also add a shadow. Uh, let's add shadow. Um, a shadow isn't really visible on this background. A shadow would be kind of gray, but that's fine. Let's uh, add the a hover effect, so hover, background, rows, 600. Okay, and you see now when I hover there is a slightly, well, a really different background and it doesn't feel uh, polished. So let's add some transition effect so that the background change is uh, more um, smooth. So I will say the effect is going to be ease uh, transition colors. Uh, is in out and duration 300 okay and you see now there is a kind of a lasting effect while i hover the button and i think bootstrap also has something like this it might have a different uh, duration but there is some effect you see the difference between a button that you hover and uh, a button that you do not hover okay looks uh, kind of fine uh now let's uh, try doing the actual abstraction. So uh, in Bootstrap there is the default button class and the uh, button primary or secondary and so on. These are color variations. So let's extract the things that we can ex extract into just the button class. I will um, undo all these changes I've been playing around uh, before. So in the Televin CSS file I will say dot button. And here I'm just going to copy all the classes I have uh, added here. And uh, yeah, add apply. And I'm going to uh, leave out the color classes. So the hover and the background. And I'm going to apply just the button class to the link. So now it is just a button. We actually see the shadow, uh, but uh, it doesn't have anything like uh, button primary or secondary applied for a color variant. So let's add uh, some color variants. I will say uh, dot button denture. And here I will have apply background uh, rows. Hover background row 600. Uh, text uh, would be, yeah, let it be text white as uh, ChatGPT suggests, I mean copilot. And let's apply uh, button danger to this link. So we have button and button danger. And here it is, looks uh, kind of okay. Now uh, we could uh, also style the uh, SVG, but we're not going to focus on this now. So we have uh, this kind of uh, button danger. Let's have another look uh, here. Looks uh, fine. Although our button is uh, full width. And uh, to have the button not full width, but uh, just like uh, normal size, uh, let's uh, uh, wrap it into a container. So I will say div class uh, inline flex. So by default, the button is kind of full width uh, of the element. And uh, here I make it uh, just uh, take as much space as it requires, not more and not less. Um, let's add a couple of buttons here inside this inline flex. And this way we can stack buttons. To have uh, more space between the buttons, uh, I would say gap uh, two, for example. And this way we have uh, buttons in line. So looks good. What if we want to have... Uh, uh, buttons that take uh, up even amounts of space on the screen. Let's uh, copy this. 
and uh, instead of inline flex I will say uh, just flex but the buttons are still taking up the minimum space so I'm going to say uh, width full on the button class and now if we use flex the buttons take up even amounts of space if we use uh, just uh, inline flex they take up as little space as possible if uh, we don't drop the button into anything then it's going to be also uh, full width let's have a look so it's kind of a button block and actually if we go into the api of uh, uh, bootstrap uh, here they also wrap buttons into uh, a div to uh, manage how they are displayed on the page how much space uh, they take on the page so we have uh, a few different ways of displaying buttons also i would uh, uh, place the button text in the center so uh, here you see bootstrap uh, has the text in the center and we are going to do the same i will say um, justify yeah i'll do it here justify center and uh, while I'm at it, I will also add the white space no wrap so that uh, if the screen becomes really small and the button text is uh, uh, really long uh, so that it doesn't get uh, uh, wrapped. Let's uh, try not adding this white space no wrap. Okay, I cannot reproduce uh, the wrapping of the text now, but uh, basically having this white space no wrap will ensure that the button doesn't take more space than uh, uh, it should okay so here we have a few links and basically if you apply the same classes uh, to a button they would work uh, the same let's try it with buttons i'll just replace link to with button two and uh, yeah it works a bit different for buttons so you would need to maybe actually apply with full on the button or something uh, but it uh, still doable okay let's try adding some operations like uh, dot button uh, primary uh, let's use the thing that was auto generated by the hint let's apply the button primary class to one of the buttons looks uh, fine let's also experiment with different sizes so let's uh, add a size as button uh, uh, excel and uh, how does bootstrap do it uh sizes so it has button large button small uh, and so on so let's uh yeah try adding like yeah let's use the same api as bootstrap button large and uh, for apply i will say uh, padding x will be uh, not four but uh, let's say eight uh, padding y will be four uh, text will be uh, excel oh lg yeah this would make more sense and let's uh, have a large button i will copy this button and make it large by just adding button large let's go back and here we have a normal sized button here we have a large button we can also easily add a, a button sm let's add this small button okay so a small button a normal button and a large button looks uh, fine um, another thing we can do for buttons uh, buttons sometimes have a disabled state so let's try applying a disabled state to a button here i have uh, a button let's uh, apply all the default styles like button button primary and uh, let's mark it as disabled so here i will say disabled true so um it should not have this uh, kind of hover effect and so on uh, so to make this primary button disabled i would uh, uh, add a variation dot but an primary disabled and if the button is uh, disabled if it has the disabled attribute i would add yeah let's go with the prompt and see what it gives us uh it doesn't seem to have uh, helped a lot let's see why oh yeah it didn't work because i was inattentive and i had it disabled true to the image 
So now, yeah, I added disabled true on the button and you see we have this uh, disabled uh, uh, class applied to the uh, primary button. So yes, that's about it. Uh, again, you can uh, just add a few uh, CSS abstractions into your app for button, uh, uh, the default button styles, button colors, disabled states, button sizes. Uh, you can use uh, blocks for links and the uh, buttons uh, to style uh, images and uh, text uh, next to each other with uh, flex item center uh, everything will be styled in line so you don't have to think that uh, like the icon is going to be above the text uh, they're going to be in line and that's uh, more or less everything you again uh, should not create uh, button components don't create uh, a crazy api like this where you have like uh, lots of different options uh, for creating a button with different variations it's just going to make the work for you and your team harder just use uh, css to solve a css problem and uh, that's it for me thanks for watching and have a wonderful day